Um, thank you very much for having me, Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be here again. And I really believe in history. I want to, I want to proselytize history. I want to make history approachable for people and fun as well. And it should be fun. After all, these are great stories. They're great stories with moral core, though. And I would hate to re anyone to read my books on Stalin without coming away with a warning from history. Georgia, where Stalin came from, is totally un-Russian. It's totally different from Russia. The alphabet in Georgia is about as different from Russian as Chinese is from English. It has an ancient history, its own literature. The chances of a, Ru of a Georgian ruling the Russian Empire are virtually nil. But it was so unlikely, and yet it happened. Now, one of the big questions about Russia, about Russia today, everyone says, is, is, is President Putin recreating Stalinism? The answer, I think, is definitely no, he isn't. And history doesn't repeat itself in that way. But what is happening is that they are using Stalin, they are rehabilitating Stalin in a, in a much quicker way than I ever thought possible. And just about a month ago, um, President Putin unveiled a new textbook. Now, textbooks are very important in authoritarian countries. Stalin himself wrote his text, his, the whole country's textbook personally uh, in 1934. And he took immense trouble with it. And he knew how important it is. Well, President Putin hasn't written his own textbook, but he has unveiled it. And in this textbook, I said one month ago, it announces that Stalin was the most successful Russian ruler of the 20th century, which is true in, in naked power terms. But it's, the point is that the cost was totally unacceptable. And he also says that Stalin was a cross between a sort of Peter the Great and a Bismarck, which gives you an idea of the way they're going to uh, promote Stalin in the future. It's quite terrifying in a way. When I was down in, in, in Tbilisi, I found a marvellous picture of Stalin, an oil painting, and my wife uh, was furious with me for bringing it home. And he's standing at the front like this, and behind him, the combine harvesters of the Ukraine fresh the steps um, behind him in glorious lines. And it's, it, it just symbolises the power of the Soviet Union, the power of Stalin. But when I brought it back, I, I had it framed. And I had it framed in my local frame that's down at my parents. And I was staying at my parents when the framer proudly delivered this beautifully framed, colossal canvas. And he carried it in and he said, nice portrait. And he carried it inside, gave it to my father, and he came out and he said, I can see the resemblance to your father, he said. <laughs> In 1921, Camus suddenly announced, very foolishly, that he was going to write his memoirs. And on the day, he went to the archives, the same archives that I used, he went there to, to write his memoirs. And I've seen the first page of the memoirs he wrote, which actually are quite fascinating. He didn't get, he didn't get to the um, heist, but he wrote, he wrote down some of his memoirs and filled in the forms. And as he let bicycled home from the archive in the, the cobbled streets of Tbilisi, he was hit by a truck and killed. Now, he may have been killed by Stalin, he may not have been killed by Stalin, but what I would say is, that it, is what the Georgians say to this day, which is that it is a bit ironic, isn't it, that a man riding the only bicycle in Georgia should be hit by the only truck. <laughs> Thank you very much.